Hi, I'm Donna and in this video we're going to be talking about the provisional cast on, provisional crochet cast on to be precise. This is um, video 7 now in our cast on toolkit series which is um, aimed at equipping you with a really um, solid uh, repertoire of about 7 cast ons that should serve you well for the majority of your knitting projects. For um, provisional cast on, um, that's a temporary cast on um, and the idea being that you will undo the cast on edge later and start knitting, you know, picking those up as live stitches then so you can start knitting in the opposite direction. And reasons you might want to do that are, um, it, it's if you want your end um, your edge to be actually a cast off edge rather than a cast on edge. Um, an example of that would be um, a, a problem that many people um, find is that they'll never be able to totally match the ends of a scarf for example. The reason being although you can um, find cast ons that um, work particularly well with other cast off so they you know that complement each other quite well it'll never be identical so having a provisional cast on will allow you to sort of start for example if you want this scarf with lovely matching edges and um, particularly if it's a, a decorative stitch pattern at the edge that can only get be achieved by casting off rather than casting on if you start in the middle of the scarf knit one side um, and then once you've cast off there you, you come back to the middle and you start casting off the other side. Um, in order to do that you'll need to have some waste yarn so um, ideally a yarn that's going to be a complete contrast to the yarn that you're knitting with in terms of colour but also it needs to be um, a slippery kind of smooth yarn to make it easier for un unpicking that provisional cast on later particularly if you're using a textured yarn to start with you don't want to have a different texture than you're trying to unpull because um, sometimes with things like mohair or whatever as you're pulling those fibres are just going to lock onto each other and make that really really difficult so anyway enough talk pull up a seat pick up a set of needles yarn and a bit of waste yarn and we'll get started so this is the provisional crochet cast on it's a temporary cast on that's formed by working into a um, crochet chain to start with so that's where the crochet bit comes in if you've not done crochet at all before don't worry it's, it's um, this is quite simple and uh, first thing you need to do is make this crochet chain and you need to do that with um, a bit of what we call waste yarn because it's just going to get thrown out at the end and you need that waste yarn to be as I said before quite contrasting to the yarn you're going to use so colour contrast is great but you also want it to be quite a slippery um, firm yarn so that's going to be easy enough to unravel when you're ready to do that. So let's get started with our crochet chain. So I'm using, this is a mercerised cotton so it's nice and smooth. I am going to just make a slip knot. I've had a few slip knots haven't we in this series. Um, but this time just grabbing a crochet hook and we go through there, pull that up. Okay, so there are many ways of holding your yarn and your hook. I tend to kind of lay, lay the working yarn there, um, grip it with my um, small finger, small finger, I say that, little finger and ring finger, and then I'm hooking the yarn up there um, and I've got my thumb and middle finger kind of working like a pincer that needs to be quite close to that stitch on the hook there and that is holding the yarn, holding the, the, the crochet as it's worked and keeping a bit of tension okay um, and all we're doing is we're going underneath with our hook and then we are turning the hook so it, the hook bit is facing down and then just pulling that through 
that stitching out and you really want to avoid pulling that too tightly so resist the temptation to do this tightly otherwise it's going to make it difficult for you and then it's going to be a bit difficult to work into when you want to do your cast on okay so we do that again we're going to hook around twist the hook so it's pointing down pull that through okay and again can it round twist the hook pull it through and as you, your chain is developing you can move your fingers up so that you, you still need to be holding close to that um, where that loop is actually at the hook okay if you need to stop and readjust your fingers that's absolutely fine i'm just going to do this in sort of slow motion again i see i'm getting a bit of far away there from the the hook so i'm going to adjust my fingers and i want to do about 20 of these or i want to do 20 stitches so i'm going to do just over 20 chains for me to pick up into and if you've lost count there is an easy way let's look at the anatomy of a crochet chain you'll see it's kind of got smooth v's on one side and it's got bumps on another side okay on the other side so you need to to count this that's where the, the slip knot was that little bit that's going across and then each v is a chain one two i'll start again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen okay and I'm not twisting, it's important not to twist this chain as you do it as well. So the smooth, shiny, um, your smooth V shapes should be facing you, not, um, not the bumps. Okay, so we said 15, I want 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I'm going to just do a couple more spare. And then you're going to snip your end. And hook that end and just pull it all the way through. And before you put it down, just quickly put a knot in that end. And the knot's there to tell you from which end you need to unravel this when, it, when you want to um, get to that much later on. Okay. And... So there's your crochet chain. You can just double check, make sure you have got all the flat V's on one side and all the nobbles on the other side. And that'll make your job a lot easier then for picking up your stitches, which we'll do next. Okay, so, so that's our chain. That's our smooth front side. We're actually going to be working into the backs, the back bumps to be precise. So from the back you've kind of got these central bumps and what I'm, because they're in the middle of the chain and we're actually going to go in and pick up a stitch from each and every one of these bumps till we've got the the number of stitches that we want it doesn't matter if we don't start right at either end you know if we start just in from that end and if we don't go to the end of the crochet chain not a problem at all we just want to have the right number of stitches so to do that we're just going to get started i'm gonna start there that's my first bump i'm gonna hold the tail end of this yarn like so to start with because i don't want to just you know accidentally do that <laughs> and pull it through so find a way that works for you but we literally it's a bit like picking up and knitting stitches okay so that was the first bump Here's the second one. And this is the next one. Find your next one. 
try not to get too tight as well as you go. Just take your time. If you're not sure, oh, what bit do I next go in? Take your time to just check. Ah, oh, yes, I can see that is the next middle bump. Be careful not to split the yarn as you're going in like that, you know, because that's going to make it not impossible, but it's going to be quite tricksy then to get the waste yarn back off again. Sorry, my needle keeps tapping on the table. It's not the end of the world either if you miss a bump by accident it'll it'll all come out in the wash try and get in everyone um but that's why it's also good to do a few more train chain than you need stitches just in case that happens you don't want to run out of chain at the end and that is that so you continue knitting um, as far as you need to on your project. Obviously, we're just looking at some swatches here. So um, if this were a scarf, you would carry on knitting till you've cast off at the other end. And then you come back to this. And what we'll do is we'll unravel it and then we will pick up and start knitting. So here we will have a go at unravelling that end and picking up our live stitches. We'll identify by the knot that we made when we finished our chain which end we're going to unravel from and that will make your life so much easier. It's, it's nigh on impossible to unravel it from the other end. You'll get very frustrated, says someone who has tried that. <laughs> So I'm actually, rather than fiddle, I'm going to just snip that knot away. And I'll just use my needle here to just, you want to get that where you tied it off. You just need to pull that um, yarn through that loop. And then it should, nice and readily, start unpicking. Okay, and that's... A stitch. I'm just gonna that was my end stitch that wasn't kind of attached. So be careful with that one. Take your time with this just to pick it. You could actually think, well, I'm going to just be very careful, do it one by one rather than unpull a few. Okay, and then you can get that ready. Pull that one. And it's you can see how easily it is unravelling because I did get the right end. If it's not this easy, you might want to uh, stop and go in from the other end um, because it means you've got the wrong end. Daisy, just get that without splitting. If, like me, you end up, you've just lost that bit momentarily, you can just rescue it with your other needle. Pop that over there. Okay. See there, I did manage to splice. I did exactly what I told you not to do, don't split the yarn. But if you just go there and nip off that bit of the orange, it's fine. Don't worry if you, you know, don't get this 100% right from this get-go, it's, it's fine. There's usually a solution. So I'm just literally going to pick that stitch, pull that yarn through. Then I'll move to the next one and I'm going to pick up the stitch with my needle before I pull that out. It's just, you know, it's just easier then. Yeah, there's no panic then trying to grab stitches before they get dropped. Okay. 
Okay, and that, I think I've managed to catch that yarn. There we are. That's it. Okay. So what we need to be careful of is that we don't lose this little one at the end. So this one, because we didn't secure it when we um, started picking up the stitches along the chain, you've just got, it's actually there, but it's not anchored. So if I were you, I would just pop your yarn through there just to secure that. And I know it was there because that belongs to, to this stitch here. So just have a little recce before you um, kind of start going off in the other direction. So I'm going to use a contrasting colour on this first row so that we can see exactly what's going on. And because this sample, this little swatch, I've been knitting the first and last stitch of every row, I'll do the same here. So then knit that first stitch, keep a hold of the end, and then I'm going to purl across. Now, because we were just getting the stitches up anyhow we can, which is always recommended so you don't lose any, um, I'll find that a lot of the stitches are kind of got twisted in that process. And you know it's twisted because the leg at the front should sort of sit further forward of the one at the back. This is the other way around, okay? So you can either just untwist that way or you can just achieve the same all in one go by purling into the back of that stitch like I'm doing here. Okay. Okay, so after a few rows, we can start to see how it looks. And if you were looking closely you can actually see that the new stitches as we're zooming off in the opposite direction here are actually formed from the loops between these stitches going the other way so if we turn that the other way um, we know that a v is a stitch okay because that's the direction we knitted. So in the direction you're knitting, all the stitches look like a V. So this was a stitch, that was the end stitch, knit stitch. I've got a um, salvage. I was talking about knitting the first and last of every row. And then this is our first stocking stitch stitch. Okay, and then there's our second one. So if we come down to there, when you um, turn that round then, I'm just doing it this way so you can get your head around it. <laughs> okay, so that was a stitch, but now we're going in this direction and the V's are staggered, aren't they, compared to, that's that V, but then the V is across there. So it's important to be aware of that because if you're just um, zooming off in stocking stitch or a plain rib or something like that on your scarf or whatever, you're probably not going to notice that too much, but you will notice it more, obviously, if you are changing colour, um, or if you've then got a if you've done this to pick up and do a particular stitch um, border. You may want to do your first row to match the the way the bit of knitting that you're attaching to. So in this case, I might have decided to just do a row or two in stocking stitch with the, you know, this pale whitish cream. Is it white or cream? Cream yarn before I switch to a different colour or a different stitch pattern. And that just gives you a neater finish again. So there you have it. That's your provisional cast on, your temporary cast on, which allows you to start knitting in the opposite direction to what you've been doing. There we are. So that's the provisional cast on. So that's six of seven now that we've been looking at over the last few weeks and hopefully that's going to now give you quite a, a few more options um, to consider when you, with your projects to get in the, the best finish that you're looking for. Um, just a reminder uh, that I'll be making all this series of eight videos available as a pdf that will collate all those videos together 
that'll um, have the additional notes there as well. And that'll be available in my free resource library um, to access that sign up um, below. And you'll also be first to know when that's available to you. So next time then, our final, final cast on, we're going to be looking at a decorative one um, and that's going to be the P Pico cast on. I've actually previously done a video on the Pico cast off, so that should complement that quite well. Um, hop along to my YouTube channel um, if you're watching this on Facebook to view that. So... I hope you can join me next week and um, look forward to seeing you then. Bye bye.